So this week I thought instead of doing like a random studio vlog where you just follow me throughout the week we would focus on how I complete like a bigger batch of orders as we've just come out of the ultimate planner sale so thank you so much if you placed an order but I'm going to go through how I kind of prepare to process all these orders in like a batch because it's a larger amount than I would normally receive on a weekly basis. I've got tiered freebies to contend with so I'm going to go over how I sort all of those out to speed things up and yeah we're just gonna we're gonna pack some orders and I'll try and give you some tips and tricks, hints on how I sort of deal with a larger amount of orders in one go. So the sale ended on Sunday and today is Tuesday. Yesterday I spent most of the day like getting the new releases all like finished and ready and put away. Well, not quite put away, I've still got them here, but I got them all collated and ready to go away. So after I finish speaking to you, I'm gonna go and put them away, tidy my desk, and then my next focus will be the freebies. So during like a big sale, like the one we just had, there are different like freebie tiers for the amount spent by the customer. So I find it easiest if I go through and prepare all of these before I start the orders. And I like to label them with these stickers that I make that have the like tiers on them. So because I do prep my tiers, freebies I like to divide them with these card dividers that I've made and I have two new freebies this time so I'm going to make two new dividers so that I can write the amounts on and I use this tab board tab punch board from we are memory keepers so the only annoying part is that I need a tier between these two and it's obviously going to be on the wrong side so I could just do that that's probably easier if I write it again on the other side so we have 125 and 150 on the back of this one. It should probably always be double sided because then I can just like flip them as I need. And then this one is 30. So those are my dividers and I just have like a collapsible crate to put them in for now. So I normally have them from smallest to largest. That's just easier for me when I have the orders. I used to always print my invoices and after a sale that used to take a long time and for some reason my printer when I print on A5 sheets which is how I used to print the invoices it would pause between each sheet so it was a laser printer and you would think it would just like print really quickly as laser printers do mine used to take a break every single sheet so it was not quick it used to take me ages to print my sale orders and sometimes I would even do it on my inkjet printer but then I didn't really like using it for invoices because I felt like it gave it like wear and tear that it didn't need but anyway now I don't print my invoices I just use the iPad and go through and look at them digitally obviously it's better for the environment but it also means my printers are not subject to so much abuse so I do use an order management system that Tom made for me so it looks like this I don't know if I've ever shown you so I have my orders grouped into different sections. There is a mystery, that's because it billed early, so normally it would be zero at this time of the month. I've got my premium mat separated, my custom script separated, but then orders is like my like total orders of like any kind that isn't subscription. But I've just set these up to like fit what suits me in terms of how I want to view my orders. But then if I scroll all the way to the bottom, I can see my orders like in the middle bit, but obviously I'm not gonna show that on YouTube. But if I download my invoices from the sale, they have like a promotional uh, like filter kind of thing applied to it that I've asked Tom to do. So I have to send him my sale information, but he will apply it to that set of orders. But then it produces for me a list of all the freebies that I need and the numbers. So this is how I then go and create the bags. You could obviously do similar by like putting your orders in a spreadsheet, filtering the totals from like high to low if you just want like the counts. But I just find this easier obviously because Tom does it. <laughs> and then in true, here's one I made earlier style, I have the freebies. So these are all of the freebies that I need to complete this set of orders. I started to print and cut them over the weekend and I finished them after the sale. So I did like estimates of totals and then I printed and cut the extras after I had the final totals so I haven't printed any extra this is exactly what I need and it's so much better than just guessing then the final thing I have to make before I can start orders is the foil loops bag so this is a mini bag so it's only five sheets there may be duplicates so it shouldn't be too hard to pack up but I haven't done them before so I'm going to probably do that first I'll grab my foil oops and just kind of dish them out I find it easier to like deal the sheets in fives Tom likes to pick five sheets I like to deal so whatever's quicker really I guess I could time myself and see what's faster but it's whatever you find the most comfortable I guess I think it's easier to keep count if you're picking the sheets but I like to deal them and I just have to try and like remember what number I'm on in like the rotation but thanks to the advent calendar I have quite a lot of foil oops so I'm gonna go and dig through this now So 
so the foil oops bags are done. I'm going to move on to the tiered freebies and I start from highest to lowest. So I'm going to deal 10 sheets and basically just make up the tiers, like building them up. So next up we have the standard vertical kit freebie which has the deco sheets and the fashion boxes. So I'm going to put these first because it kind of sandwiches them between two bigger sheets and just means that when I pick the bundle up like all together they don't really fall apart. I don't know if this is like so basic that it doesn't really need to be said like how to collect these bundles um, but maybe it's interesting to watch. So we do 10 of these and then I will make the kits. So it's literally just this over and over. This is page six of the standard vertical kit. So that goes in and then I'll do like page five, page four, page three, etc. So I'll come back to you when I've done the rest of the standard vertical kit sheets. So next up we have 75 pound glitter add-on freely. So just deal those like the previous sheets. Then we're back to mini kits. So we have some fashion boxes again. So just put them first. And then the deco sheet. Then the mini kit. So again, sheets in reverse order so that when the bundle's together, they are in the right order. These sheets are muddled up. <laughs> then the final sheet of the mini kit. Got the full boxes. Like usual, all of the full boxes across the tiered freebies are different. So you can probably make like at least two spreads. Then new this time, we have the journaling kit freebie. This is the £30 tier. I don't know which sheet I want to be on top. I feel like that's a really pretty one to have on top because of the florals, but that is like classic journaling kit. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to put this one second. So then just the final page. And then there is the all orders freebie. So this would go in like every single bag, but I let the customer choose the hair color that they wanted. So I'm going to put these in as I go based on whether they left a note for wanting a hair color or not. So these won't go in the bundles at this stage, but that is a completed bundle. So it just needs a sticker. So obviously because the foil is in the front, I can see that this is the 150 pound one. So I don't really need the sticker, but once we get further down the levels, they all start to just look like this. So that's when the freebie sticker comes in handy. So I'm gonna continue making up my tiered freebie bags, but I'll show you when they're done and then we can probably start orders. So freebies are basically done. I didn't use the 30 labels in the end. I forgot that I don't normally package up the 30 ones separately. I just put them in with the rest of the order. So those are here. I've got my all order freebies, which I'll pop in the front. And then I've also got the newsletter freebie. So this again is something that the customer like requests or doesn't request. So I'll pop those in the front as well, just so that I can grab those if I need to. So this is typically the setup I will have when doing orders. I have this little drawer with my cello bags in. You normally do put the iPad just like rested, like leaning on these drawers. It's fine now, I can see it well, or I'll have it lying down but I'll also normally put these here, so it will just be where things fit. And I've also got access to my January freebies, my all orders freebie. This is where I'll put like scraps of rubbish. So we're pretty much ready to go to pack orders. Super gloomy today, so apologies about the light. But when I'm ready to pack my orders, I will generate my invoices, like I showed you on the app, where well, I showed you as much as I could for like, customer data reasons. So I have it so it gives me all of my orders that don't include premium mats or custom scripts first. So these have a shorter processing time. All of my in-stock items are one to two weeks processing, but premium mat and customs are two to three. I normally do get them done in the one to two, but like just in case, I like to push them down to the bottom. So I normally deal with those when I've done the rest of the orders, which means I should be able to knock out a chunk of them pretty like early on which is good for like motivation and then the other thing I do which maybe is like the opposite but I like to do the bigger orders first so the more complicated ones and it helps because my brain is normally like more switched on like the earlier in the day that I'm doing orders so it helps to get the complicated ones out of the way first and then if I am sort of like rushing to meet a post run towards the end they're the easier smaller orders to pack so it's just a little bit like easier I play a lot of mind games with myself I've realized like as a business owner but I do think I've prepped as much as I can so the only thing left to do now is to actually pack the orders 
I thought this would be a good opportunity to do a bit of an order packing slash fulfillment Q&A. So I did ask for some questions on Instagram. So I'm going to just go through those while you watch me pack some orders. So the first question was, how do you fulfill orders? Do you do it one by one or in bulk? And then I got a similar one, do you pull inventory in bulk? So I do typically pack orders one by one. I'm a bit worried that if I were to pull them in bulk, I would mix things up and just have like a bunch of things everywhere and get a bit overwhelmed. So I do the one by one. I have such a wide range of products. I think I have almost 1,300 items. So if I were to pack them in bulk, I don't actually think there would be any kind of benefit because all the orders are really complex and different. So, and especially during a sale, I think it would just not save me time at all. There are a few exceptions to this. If I do like a pre-order or release an item that has to ship on its own, so basically just like a single item order, I can do those in bulk. And then things like the monthly mystery kit, I do pack those in bulk as well because it's normally one or two kits per envelope. I filter them by the item on click and drop and it's just quicker to do those in bulk. But normal orders, I will just do them one by one. The next question was, what storage do I use? And I use these white boxes from the brand Wham. You can find them online or in stores like The Range, Wilco, some supermarkets. Amazon does have some bulk packs. So for the quarter sheets, I use the size 4.02 and 5.02 for kits. I just find they're a good size. They're pretty cheap and they're white, they're inoffensive. I think they come in pink and gray and possibly other colors, but I've just used them from the beginning and I don't want to change. So they work really well for me. And then I also have some like below desk storage from Ikea, which you can't really see in this video. You can see it in my office tour, but that's where I store like albums and like bulkier things. So the next question is, have I ever considered using barcodes to keep track of stock? And to be honest, no. I did Google this because it's not something I've ever really thought was necessary. I thought it was more like if you're selling to retailers for them to put your products in like a brick and mortar store. But I don't really know. Managing inventory is not really an issue for me. I make most of the products myself. So if I ever need to restock something, I can just make more. And if it is outsourced, I tend to be quite conservative with the amount I list, especially for the first release. And then I've got some extras if I need to replace any or something like that. So I don't think barcodes would really benefit me. It could possibly like increase my packing accuracy, but I think the time spent like scanning the items and making sure that they're appropriately labeled with the right barcode would probably outweigh the benefit because my order errors are typically minimal. So I think it's something that's probably better suited for businesses with like larger premises and multiple people packing orders. But if you know more about it than me and think that it would be a good idea, please let me know in the comments because I really haven't researched it much at all. So the next question is, how often do I reorganize my stock space? And I used to reorganize it a lot, but I've, I've learned where things are kept. So it's easier to keep it as it is unless it needs to change. So that would be if I notice like an inefficiency, like if a specific item or range is being ordered quite often, but it's stored further away, I might swap it with something less popular that's stored closer. Or if I add a new product like the foil and need to create a space for it. The next question is how many of each item do you print? So with kits, I normally print around 25 standard vertical kits, 20 mini kits and 20 of each add-on and I'll restock them as necessary. If I think a collection's a little bit more specific, I might print less to start with if I don't think I'm gonna sell as many as a normal collection. And then scripts and doodles are the same, usually 20 of each and I'll just restock as needed. Since getting the graph tech, it's so much easier for me to stay on top of restock. So I'm actually able to do restocks now, whereas with the silhouettes, most collections would only have sort of one run because they couldn't keep up with replenishing the stock. Then the final question, what's my favorite thing to pack and my least favorite thing to pack? So I think my favorite thing would be kits because they're already pre-packaged into cello bags. And I recently switched how I like label the kit storage. So I used to just have the kit name, but now I've changed it to be numerical. So it's basically the SKU and it goes up like one, two, three, four, instead of just being the kit name. So it's so much quicker to locate the right kit and the add-ons are stored next to them. So it's just really nice and efficient to pack sticker kit orders. And then for my least favorite thing, I had to think about this one because there's nothing I really dislike packing but possibly oops and grab bags because when I released them for Black Friday, I changed all the SKUs to be what I thought would be like more efficient and streamlined, but I actually made them all a little bit too similar. So when I pack these orders, I have to double and sometimes triple check that I've got the right variant of oops or grab bag 
because they're a little bit too similar. So I'm planning to change all of those two numbers as soon as possible. So these are the completed orders from the Batch Without Premium or Custom Scripts. I've been working through some restocks of some journaling kits, some doodles and some scripts so that I've been like making use of the graph tech while I'm packing orders. So I'm going to go on to click and drop and process the postage now. I like to do this in batches to save time and then I just have to stick the labels on when I've done them all. So the first batch of orders have shipped the removable mat and today I'm working on the premium mat upgrades and the custom scripts. So for premium I find it easiest to go through the orders first and make myself like a tally chart table thing. So apologies for the glare but basically I do the collections down the side and just make like a tally of what I need to print and cut to fulfill the batch of orders. I've got doodles and scripts as well but I have those upgraded less frequently so they're a little bit further down. So I will then go and open the collections that I need on my computer and open them in Photoshop and this normally takes quite a long time because the files are really big so I'll just open them and then leave it and come back to it when they've all opened and it looks like they all have. So I'll go through those files and print what I need referencing the table that I made and while they're printing I will try and create the custom scripts. Don't know how many I've got but hopefully I'll get those done in the time it takes to print. I think I'll be able to start cutting customs while premium is still printing so I might get that done in the window while premium prints but I don't think I'll get them all done. But when I print premium now I will try and print the same design files in a row so I will print all of page one for like 10 collections and then I'll do all of page two for the 10 collections. So I've got all of the like cut files together so when I cut them on the graph tech I don't have to like rearrange the sheets. Sometimes I will just print them in like random order and rearrange them but if I can help it I will print them in the right order because it means I can start cutting sooner if that makes sense. And then one thing I forgot to mention is my like overflow premium mat stock is in this box. So when I've made my tally chart on the table, I'll go through the box and check if I have any of the sheets that I already need. So I haven't got to print them twice. So for the ones I'm cutting today, these are the sheets that I already had printed and cut. So not that many, but a lot of the collections that I'm printing and cutting today are new. So I haven't done them before, which is why I don't have any extra stock. have a new microphone for my camera and the like little port that it sits in to like sit it on the camera is right in front of the viewfinder so if it looks like I'm struggling to keep myself in frame until I can like find a way to put it somewhere else it's because I am <laughs> but um I've done the orders so I'm gonna go and do a post run today I managed to get my other orders done as well so I'm gonna drop them all off at once which is great I did approach premium mat a little bit differently this time normally after I printed and cut and collated them I will try and like just do the order straight away but I put them in a little box this box and I think it was useful I'm not sure I haven't really got enough evidence I do think it's probably like neither here nor there the thing about like doing the order straight away is I end up with like premium mat in piles whereas this like I kind of got it put away neatly but I don't think I was like dealing with enough orders for it to actually make a massive difference so all I really have left to do is the post run so I'm gonna do that now we will 
overlay some b-roll and that is basically the end of this video so i hope you enjoyed seeing how i process sale orders maybe if you're in a small business you got some tips or just find it interesting again a massive thank you for your orders during the ultimate planner sale and i will see you in my next video bye